Hi, my name is Ryan Langlish, and this is Ludo Lodge, a channel about sparking growth in your journey as a game designer. Now, a big part of being a game designer is tracking and organizing all of the information surrounding your game design projects, whether it's just recording down different ideas that you want to hold on to, or actually um, writing up rules and, and actual prototype materials for a game, or recording playtest information, or just brainstorming. There's a lot of different pieces of information and data that you may want to kind of keep organized and you may have more than one project that's in flight or you may put a lot of work into one project and then put it on hold and want to be able to keep all that data so that later you could potentially come back to it. Now if you're anything like me, this probably has looked something like using some note-taking tool like OneNote or Evernote but combining it kind of with a bunch of stuff in Google Drive and maybe using Trello for um, some task management stuff and then maybe you have some physical notebooks that have a bunch of brainstorming notes in it. Um, And it's kind of disjointed and information in a lot of different places and the, the different tools are kind of good at their own things. There's things that Google Drive is good at and good things that Trello, things that Trello is better at. Um, And it can be kind of hard to keep track of kind of everything that has to go with a single project. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a piece of software that I ran across probably a little over a year ago called Notion, which you may or not be familiar with. Um, And basically sharing how Notion has effectively replaced probably 95% of what I used all those other tools for. And I found it to be really powerful, even outside of game design, just in my life in general, in organizing information and being able to kind of build out that organizational structure the way that I want to and to get the most out of it. So in this video, I'm going to specifically just be talking about some of the basics of Notion and kind of why I feel it's something that maybe as a game designer you should check out and consider using um, for organizing your game design ideas and projects um, and why I've kind of gravitated towards it. Um, And in a future video, I'll actually go ahead and share a template of um, my kind of what I've developed as my own board game design project template that kind of goes a little farther and showing a lot of the power of Notion and kind of how much you can customize it to your specific use case um, and kind of get the most out of it. And I'll kind of walk through that. But for this video, we're going to keep it to the basics and kind of just maybe try to convince you why Notion is maybe different from some of those other tools or maybe what you're getting out of the tools that you're using right now. So in my mind, there's a lot of reasons, but I'm going to name kind of three main ones that I think Notion um, ends up being a really good fit for this kind of thing. Um, the first one, and if you didn't notice, we're looking at Notion right now. This is just my uh, Notion desktop app workspace open here. Um, and one of the things that's really nice about Notion is how its hierarchy of structure and pages in that it's completely flexible. So you'll see over on the sidebar here, I have all these kind of top level pages, but any of these, so for example, if I go to projects, has a bunch of child pages for different things, and then those can have child pages. So you know, puzzle design, I have some things here. And there's no limit to this structure and hierarchy. Any page can have any number of pages under it. Um, But what's very powerful about that is each one of those pages is a fully fleshed out workspace. Like a page that's nested 10 levels down is absolutely equivalent to a page that's at the top level. So there's no limit to kind of how much you do within a certain page. I can have a page nested way in here that's an extremely complex built uh, framework for some specific thing, um, but I can put it exactly where I want in my organizational structure. So that piece of it is really nice. Um, But then if we look at any given page, there's a lot of flexibility in how you can go about creating the page. And that's because Notion is built around what are called blocks. So you see when I hover here, there's kind of these icons here for either adding a new block or I can drag this block around. Everything on your page is a block. So when I just start typing here, um, this is just a text block, kind of the default that I could, you know, just type in notes. Um, And then I could delete this um, block or move it around and you could throw them in columns or some of the formatting things like that. 
Um, but other than that, a page has a title, and then there's kind of the notion aesthetic of every page has an emoji, and you can actually give it a cover photo, and you can upload your own emojis. And that's what you're seeing over here, like in the hierarchy. So assigning those gives it a really nice kind of, at least I, I like the aesthetic, and I know a lot of other people do, um, especially if you're comparing it to something like just having folders in Google Drive, or um, even I was using OneNote for a while, which kind of forced you into a notebook structure with pages, but was kind of limited to that rigid structure. But within here, there's a lot of different types of blocks that Notion gives you access to. So you'll see it says type slash for commands. And when I do that, it's just gonna show me all the different blocks um, that I can do. And these range from like, kind of, oh, that's kind of nice to be able to do that, to like hugely powerful things. So at the most basic, as I was talking about the uh, nested structure, I could do a page, which is gonna open up a new page, which is now nested inside of here. And so that's how I can just keep, you know, creating pages however I want. And I could give this its own, when you assign an emoji, it actually does it randomly. Um, but you could obviously change that. Um, snowman research. Uh, so if I go back here, I now have that page, and this page is just as flexible as what I could do with it as the page that I was working in. So that's kind of the most basic kind of thing you can do to start organizationally doing things. But there's other really nice things like, and there's actually some shortcuts for it, like doing bolded lists really easily, or even doing square brackets to get a to-do list. So I can um, make a to-do list, and it has the functionality that I can check things off. Really little touches, but stuff that you're maybe really not going to get easily out of some of the other like note-taking software you might be using. Um, let's see. Another one here that might is kind of cool is toggle list. Um, I can make a toggle, and then within that, I can put other blocks and any types of blocks. Like I could put um, a quote in here. Make games, right? Um, but then when I toggle this, it hides it and all other blocks in it inside of the toggle. It can be kind of nice if you're taking notes or, or making kind of a, a structured list that you want to be able to easily toggle on and off what's inside of things. Just nice to haves. Um, as when I find when I'm filling out pages in Notion, some of these things just kind of help me organize things better. Um, Again, this is just kind of like a fun little thing that you can do a call out that has like an emoji and it's like, you know, remember this and I could type in here and I could change the color of this. As you can use some of these things to kind of create a very aesthetically pleasing layout or something that's easy to read. Um, so you have a lot of flexibility there. Suppose you wanted to add a link to a, a website. Um, so maybe boardgamegeek.com, great bookmark. Um, it'll throw in a web link like this that just looks really nice, right? It kind of pulls the preview and it's kind of almost like a Google result. Um, and so I found anytime I need to save web links, that's kind of just an aesthetically pleasing and easy at a glance to remember what links I have um, for something. So it's nice to have. That's, <laughs> I'm just going to keep repeating myself. And this is another block that's nice to have. And this is another block that's nice to have. Um, and obviously a lot of this isn't specific to like doing it as a game designer and you could go watch a lot of videos or just uh, documentation on Notion and what's available to you. I'm just trying to give kind of a, a brief idea of some of the blocks that are available. Another cool one um, is the ability to embed a file. So I could actually just upload a file and it would embed it here and then I could download it from here um, or view it. And so that's kind of like what I would otherwise use Google Drive for if I wanted to like host a file. Now I will mention that the free version of Notion file uploads is one of the, the areas that has limitations as far as, I, I don't know exactly what the limit is. Um, I personally pay for the, the personal plan, I think is what it's called, that's $4 a month or something because I've found um, I use Notion enough for enough different things that it's worth it to me. Um, I will say though, the free version of Notion, super powerful and very little restrictions. Like files is one of the few restrictions um, that they give you. But I found that to be useful to be able to upload and embed a file that I otherwise maybe would keep on my computer or throw into drive. I can now put in a page, like embedded in the page exactly with what it relates to and in my organizational structure, um, which is really nice. But the third thing I'm gonna talk about 
as far as the first two being the flexibility of hierarchy of pages. The second was flexibility with the different types of blocks you have to work with within a page. But the biggest one, and this is the one that I think sets Notion apart, really apart from, from other similar um, software solutions, is Notion's database functionality. So you'll notice that one of the um, blocks that's available here um, are all these different database ones. There's um, tables, galleries, lists. Um, let's just throw in a table, and this is inline, meaning it's going to actually do it within this page instead of creating a new page. And this is essentially a spreadsheet, right, like that you would maybe use Google Sheets for. Um, but there is a lot of flexibility here um, in that I can change all of these properties and actually change like the types. The name actually has to stay, um, like you can rename what it's called, but there always has to be this title field that's a text field. But every other field I have complete flexibility to make what I want um, it to be. And so I can, you know, have check boxes and I can have uh, emails, URLs, files, media, person. So like I can assign it to, you know, a person here. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility in how you make this. But what's and you can put these anywhere. But something that's very cool about it is the ability to add views and every table can be converted into any of these other views. So for example, I could convert it into a Kanban board, which is kind of like Trello, where the tickets are moving through the different statuses, or a timeline where it's showing them on a calendar. Like if I had one of the fields that was a date field, I could have them all show on a calendar. Um, or, or a calendar view. A timeline is more for like uh, time passing versus calendar is just like by day. Um, list and then a gallery is very like visual like showing different panels and it would show like the cover photo or something like that. And so it's very cool that you can define different views and have it go between them and to kind of show this I'm just going to go into this one that I already made called projects. So let's click into this and this is a full page database so it kind of just creates it in a different page. And so this is maybe an example of maybe I want a database for all my game design projects that are happening right now. And maybe I have some things like, oh, this is the title of the game. This is like where the in the design it is, like idea to early design all the way to like published or working with a publisher. And these are all just defined by me. Like I could create new ones or change the colors of these. Um, this was just an example. Uh, what's the kind of weight of the game that I'm shooting for? Is this a medium heavy game or a light game? Uh, minimum players, max players, min length, max length. These are all just defined by me. You could literally do whatever you want, whatever you think is useful to be tracking um, for a given uh, project. But what's really cool about this is every row in here is a page in Notion. And if you remember what I said about pages, a page is a fully wide open workspace for you to nest anything you want in. So for racing game here, which seems to be my, my go-to for when I need an example project to talk about in a video. If I open this page, this is a workspace. Like I can open it full screen here and I can do whatever I want here. I could add more tables, I could add more pages, I could do anything I wanted to add for this particular project, I could nest inside of here and it would be nested within this row in this table. And so you can see how this starts to be really helpful for organizations. Suppose you had 20 different projects that vary anywhere from, you know, it's just an idea or it's something you worked on a lot but not recently and it, it's kind of on hold or you have ones that are active projects. Each one of them could keep all of its information kind of within here and in whatever way you want. Um, and I find that to just be a really uh, nice organization for things and being able to have them in this this table here. I mentioned the views before, um, which ends up being cool because you can kind of define different ways you want to see the same data. So if I go to gallery, I have this just showing the cover photo as the gallery. And so this would look really nice if I had a bunch of projects. It would actually just show a grid of all these different things, um, which is just kind of a cool way to be viewing it. Um, a Kanban board is kind of cool. And this, I guess I'm showing a bunch of different properties here. I could define which properties actually show. So maybe I don't care about any of these in this view. Um, but it's going to show it by which state it's in because this Kanban board is based on that status field. 
And so then I can actually like drag, you know, racing game. Oh, it's going into development. I could put it over here and I can kind of see where all my different projects are at any given point in time. Something that I'm going to get into more in my next video that's going through um, my template for some board game design projects is the fact that you can define templates in Notion. And a template is basically you're fleshing out a workspace with pages and, and any other kinds of blocks that you want, but then saving it as a template and then you can create new pages from that template. So what I could do is, I, and what I'm gonna show in the next video, is I can make an entire template that has all of the organization and pieces and nested structure of everything I would want for any board game design project, make it a template, and then every time I make a new project, I can just create it from that template and I get all of that just as a baseline and I can start filling it out with the information for that particular project, which ends up being super, super powerful and it'll be a little more clear like how powerful it can be um, when I go over that in the next video. Now I don't wanna to get too into the weeds in this video because it's really just meant to be an introduction and kind of highlighting some of the, the top things that I think uh, make Notion a good choice. But another one I did wanna mention is kind of its collaboration features. So for any given page, I can actually um, share it with, with people. So I could invite somebody to this page and that would mean that they in Notion, in their own instance of Notion, would get to see this page, but they wouldn't be able to see other areas of my workspace. They would be limited to this page and anything nested in this page. They would kind of get everything from there down. And so this is very cool if you're working um, with a with a co-designer or collaborating on a project because you can invite them and end up working together in Notion. Um, and like I've done brainstorming sessions where you know two of us are actually filling out and and looking at the same document in Notion. Um, and then that brainstorming session is saved in Notion and it's nice organization and everything. Um, and so that's kind of a cool uh, just feature of collaboration and the ability there. You also might have noticed there's this share to web feature, which actually you can, if you turn that on, it's going to give you a URL where this page is now published as a website, essentially, like somebody can punch that in their, in their web browser and they'll get to see this page, which that can be a cool thing. Suppose you, um, for each of your projects, keep like a cell sheet that you've done in Notion. You could actually make that public to the web and share that URL to share um, the sell sheet with anybody that you would want to share it with. Um, cool stuff, and there's a lot more cool stuff. And when I walk through um, my template, which is by no means like a, you know, this is the way that the best way to do things. It's just kind of something I've built out in a way that made sense to me. But I think it'll kind of show like just how far you can go with some of this, and kind of specifically catering it um, to your needs. But if this looks interesting, like if you were watching this, maybe you hadn't heard of Notion and you're like, oh, this looks kind of cool. I would definitely encourage you to get a free account and just download it and start playing with it a little bit because the free gives you so much. You don't really need um, the personal plan unless you really are using it heavily and kind of want some of those extra features. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a great choice. I think in general, it's important to be recording things like game ideas that you have or... Um, other information so that data isn't going for weight, not relying on your brain, right, to, to remember all these things. So maybe consider giving it a look. If you found this video kind of interesting or useful, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel, especially if you're interested in that upcoming video or if you're watching this far enough in the future, I'll probably link that video in the, in the YouTube card. But thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.